Yeah, I got a bunch of Bond albums. You're, three... you're, you're a collector, aren't you? I'm an ex like hoarder, reformed hoarder. Yes, that, yes. Sorry, I, I didn't I want to call them. it that. That sounds dirty. But hoarder like, does sound dirty. I say collector. It sounds more. Uh, yeah, like you know, I always collected things. I like. Food I've been sets looking at my beer bottle and can collection. I feel like you. And now that I'm moving, I'm thinking just about. Perfect. I'm keep the milkshakes though. I will. I like the milkshakes. The milkshakes and everything else, but I kept like. Heady and focal and crusher. Keep like a couple key ones. See now, all of a sudden, <laughs> I went from piff them, piff them, get rid of them. Can no, I keep that? Oh no, keep no, that. Oh, no, 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 you gotta keep that. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all are brewheads. Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is Six Out of Five Brewhead. And I'm Scott Beer, Cold Beer Enthusiast. And welcome to episode 125 of Bear Nuts the Podcast. This is just me and you, man. Is that a milestone episode, 125? I feel like, what, kind what of is. It? It's a second quarter century. That's what I'm saying, yeah. What is that, five quarter centuries <laughs> we've done? Five quarter centuries. That's a shit ton of podcasts. High five! Hey! So, as you can tell, we are, well, if you're listening, we're not at a brewery. If you're watching, <laughs> we're clearly not at a brewery. We're on a couch. Um, we're here in Montreal. We just had our, uh, I think it's probably our fifth or fourth. I think it's our fifth collaboration launch Depends tonight. how deep you want to get into it. Yeah, that. I yeah. keep forgetting. Fifth collaboration launch tonight at L'Espace Public for our newest collab called Dream Sequel. It is a lactose, of course. Of course. Uh, blackberry, blackberry, blueberry, blueberry, milkshake, sour. Made with sour power. Sour power yeast from yep. uh, Max from Dunham. Uh, it's a second variant uh, of the first beer called Dream Sequel that we did in 2018 for Mondial around June-ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was a marmalade milkshake sour. Yes. And we were doing the two of them. It's okay, Tiff, you can play that. Tiff in the building. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, T squad, T squad, T squad. Tiff doing, okay, Tiff's doing the social. The She's making sure. Do you want to, do you want to keep it down over here, Tiff? Yeah, you can watch your Instagram. A little bit. Okay, slow. Um, so basically, we did the second variant. Super cool. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Different yeast than the first one. Yeah. Uh, which He told us what the yeast was like three times. I keep forgetting. It's like, was it Vermont yeast or something? The first one? Yeah. Mm. He mentioned it because we might go back to it. Check the notes. Yeah, the notes will be there. But basically, we're going to do a uh, can release, which we said in the last vlog we're out to say it. Yep. We're going to do a can release of one of the two beers. So we're sort of marinating on it for now. It seems like people t- tend to have a the bit of a general favorite. consensus, yes, was... Do you want to say that? Uh, you, I guess who gives a fuck well, well people seem to be leaning towards the first one for yes. now because they really love the first one because it tasted like a creamsicle uh, ice cream I know you didn't get to have it as fresh as perhaps we did because yeah. I brought you a growler like a week later or something yeah. but um, so that was a lot of fun nice little turnout super cool I liked it I quite enjoyed the beer, the beer. yeah um, totally different vibes than the first one I would totally say different. but uh, it had its own little thing going on and uh, yeah it was creamy. There were lots of lactose there. Lactose sour. Tried to the ramp that up top. a bit. I liked the sourness. Uh, for me, it was it was uh, well balanced. It was. And the fruit was there. It was a beautiful color. Uh, it went down a treat. I quite enjoyed it. I, I couldn't have like five of them, but like... No, we had a couple. Yeah, I had a couple. And was I was good. like, oh, that's cool. Feeling it. Same as the last one. You and people seemed to like it, but when, when asked, did you have a preference one over the other, people are like, just the... The fact Most that things. Dreamsicle like literally tasted like an orange creamsicle, I think, yeah. really appealed to people. They're like, damn, like the name, the, the name, whole and the whole concept, exactly. So, with for the can, we might do that, but we're talking about doing another, like a, I don't know if we call it like a test batch. We do another batch for the brew pub only, yeah, just to tweak it, do it again, have a bit more of a fresh comparison because what well, was like June, so it's like yeah. nine, nearly nine months right. ago. It's I think it only time. makes sense. Like you're, you're not going to hit it at the park. I mean, as good as it was, it's like. You can always improve it. Like, try yeah, something yeah. else. Try to mix it, you know, add this hop instead, or a little more hops, a little less lactose, whatever. I'm sorry. Exactly. <laughs> maybe I did maybe ramp up more lactose. lactose. Yeah, yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. I feel like we could always yeah. do it more. But it was cool. It was fun. And yeah, man. Lots Simon's, of people showed up. And... It was great. Simon and Val are the best. So if yep. you're ever in Montreal, please get down to the Spas Public in uh, Oshlaga. Um, just such a dope place. Great vibes. Amazing people. Um, but, you know, Guillaume hung out with us all night, which yep. is dope from Malta Hops and Trans Brews. So... Bunch of people roll through. Just cool, man. Good vibes. Good times. So we figured let's do a podcast. And instead of trying to organize one with a brewery, which we would normally do, I figured yeah. like our, I guess people might have seen it, our number one most downloaded podcast last year was episode 88, 
um, the spotlight on Ontario, which was just the two of us. So yeah. this is not a spotlight video, mm-hmm. but we figured we'd theme this one amongst other stuff. Yeah. We were kind of thinking, well, let's do one, just the two of us, like we used to do, and well, we got to have some sort of theme, like let's, let's go with something. And I had just started... Uh, uh, going through my cellar as did I because I hadn't touched it for a long time yeah. and I'm like getting cheap and I'm like don't want to buy <laughs> beer right now so like you know what? I have a bunch of good beers in the cellar let's bust one of those out so I had a few of them and uh, some held up really well and actually I mean I, I didn't compare them one to with another OG. with uh, right yeah, yeah. but some were kind of like off and tasting really yeah like it just I, I feel like it lost hmm. and then others there were some L's and there were some W's, so... Interesting. Um, I guess we'll get further into that, why a beer would do well or wouldn't do well in cellaring. Yeah, That's so maybe kind of do's point. and don'ts in right. cellaring. Yes. And, you know, I've been doing the same and digging into them, and probably we'll talk about what we've both been doing right, right or wrong that yeah. we've realized, and that, you know, some have let sit too long, and maybe bad temperature control yeah. and all that type of shit. So, we went through... We have some notes here... On essentially some cellaring do's or don'ts. Yep. You and I have uh, don't have actual cellars. What is Where an actual you... cellar? So my understanding uh, is an, a cellar would be a temperature or climate controlled room um, where one would keep their beers. Right. It's very similar to a wine cellar, same shit essentially. Um, well, mine is temperature controlled. You keep all yours in the fridge. Yes. Okay. It's a temperature controlled fridge. Too. Oh, well, then I'm incorrect about your yeah. cellaring. I thought you kept them just like... No, I have... Uh, well, I bought that little... Um, the temperature control. Yeah, thing. the Johnson Controls temperature. I, I bought it for brewing purposes. I still use it for that when I brew, which I don't do very often. But um, I now use it to keep my uh, little bar fridge at a consistent temperature. Right. So I keep all my cellar beers in there. I keep it at around 55 degrees. Mm-hmm. And it keeps them cool, not cool. cold. Uh, out of the light, uh, under ideal circumstances. Fahrenheit, to be clear. Correct. So it keeps them just nice and cool, just dark, just where they want to be. So um, I've had, I essentially put a bunch of beers in there about two years ago and just started getting into them now. So I had a few of them. Some were very nice. Others I felt lost some in the process. What did they lose? Like what kind of beers and what would they have lost? Like- um... And that clearly yours is not because of a temperature issue, it's just because that beer itself just dropped. That's right. Time. And I didn't really know a lot about cellaring at the time. I just so like, oh, this, I'm like, I associate it with high ABV. I'm like, you don't want to put a light beer in there. You don't want to put a hoppy beer in there, mm-hmm. right? There would be no point in cellaring a lager. Um, neither would there be a point in cellaring like a hoppy IPA, right? Or any IPA. Uh, so I put, I put high ABV beers. I put uh, Belgian styles, Imperial stouts, stuff like that in there. Uh, there were a couple porters, like higher ABV porters. I think one of those was the ones, an adjuncty one with like coconut and chocolate. Adjuncts tend to drop. And it was in a can as well, so it, it got a metallic flavor in the it. The night shift. That's the you one. You waited too long, that shit yeah. was fire. Yeah. So I, I like a year ago. I had it, and I feel like it, a lot of it dropped out. Um, I still have a bunch in there that I'm really looking... It wasn't bad though, right? It was just not drink, not like optimal. You could tell it wasn't what it yeah, was. Yeah, that's right. And... I'm kind of pissed because I should have drank that one right away when we first got it. But I, I waited still a few yeah. months, but it was it was pretty good. But um, so like the optimal they say is uh, about a year. Okay. And you can leave it anywhere up to like two or three years, depending on the style, depending on the ABV and style and such. But that's kind of the optimal zone. Gotcha. That you'd want to go for. Right. Um, styles like you know, uh, like the Belgian styles. So like right. a double or something like that. Uh, Imperial stouts. They last um, any longer. Well, yeah, the high anything with um, my high ABV. High ABV. Because they're a bit more stable. That's right. Hmm. Um, and I feel like they benefit more. Like the le- like, there is some that falls out. Like it, like the fruited things, like things that are fruited. The fruit's gonna it's fall gonna out. Fine. Like it, like, like if you're not drinking out. those right away, yeah. you're not getting it at its optimal flavor. So no. It's so hard. I know that, like, I've like, got a bunch of my mine are just literally sitting, excuse me, on, like, a bar cart um, in the open in a temperature-fluctuating room apartment, um, which is not optimal by any standards. Um, I have a, a variety of styles. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the types, but essentially it's sort of farmhouses, 
uh, fruited sours, regular sours, whatever, and stouts, right. essentially. That's, and barley, a couple of barley wines and stuff in there. Um, usually, and the reason, I don't know about you, I, I, I would say for most beer nerds, none of us really intended, most of us never intended to have a cellar. It's like, you get hold of these beers like it's the crab beer. Down, yeah, it's really overstock. <laughs> like, it really, that's all it is. Like, yeah. I got a bunch of, I did a trade, drank all the other ones pretty quick because they were haze, and I put those ones there, and then I would finish them, and then I'd get more haze mm-hmm. before I can get to the other one, and I'm like, or this, then I get beer mails, I'm like, fuck, I've got to do this This first. is what became the issue, the the drinkability, the the perishability of hazy IPAs, and the constant influx, whether it be traded, purchased, yes. or given to you, Yep. Um, you're like, well, if I don't drink that, and that, I remember that one phrase that kind of changed the game for you, is the, uh, treat it like milk. And you're for like, the haze? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, it's milk, it's milk, it's milk. I have, I have to drink, drink, I have to drink this milk this week. Yep. If I don't drink this milk, it's going to be sour. <laughs> <laughs> you got, and it, but yeah, you had, the, you had an influx of hazy IPAs, and you're like, if I don't drink these... They're not going to taste how they're supposed to taste. And then I wasted my money. And then you're wasting it. Right. If they're for a female. Or if it's for a male, you're not doing it justice, right? You're like, uh, right? Because the other half ain't cheap, so I'm letting them bitches waste. Like, fuck. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, that's kind of what happened with with my situation anyway. So, this winter, uh, it's been good. I've kept it really, like, low. Tiff and I have just been home working. Like, we just not... Um, we traveled a few, doing a few little things, but nothing crazy. So we've been able to no trips of a lifetime. No trips of a lifetime <laughs> yet. So we're like, all right. Well, we. Uh, I was like, yeah, I can finally get into the cell. And you could tell there's a few little dents. I've really yeah. like put a dent in. Tiff helped. Nothing me. started growing. Like it's on the bottom of your bar cart, but now it's on your floor and yeah. it's kind of flowing into your bedroom and like under it's, the desk. And... It's actually gonna sleep in the bed. We're yeah, give out the bed. <laughs> It's out of control. I, I want to like get into them. It's like just you have some I'm working on it. There's like, some fire, some now. fire there yeah. too. Like you got like every barn owl there. You got um, half the barn owls. Sweet Jesus, in the barn. that was sitting yeah. around for a while. I want to. I'll be waiting. They actually just released Is that, it. That Motley Crew's open, right? Mo- I don't have Motley Crew. I never had that. Which one are you there? There's only two things the that open are... Bottle oh, that's open. Motley yeah, Crew. there's a Motley Crew there. It's open. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, I will, I'll just keep it. That's the old one. I was yeah, going to yeah. keep that one for the... Uh, I want to put like a flower in it or some shit, like a vase. Okay. It was kind of cool. I don't know why we just kept the bottles for now. Um, yeah, I got a bunch of barn owls. You're, you're, a bit of, you're a collector, aren't you? I'm an ex-hoarder, like hoarder, reformed hoarder. Yes, that, yes. I, sorry, I, I didn't want to call them. it that. That sounds dirty. But hoarder uh, does sound dirty. I say collector. It sounds more... Uh, yeah, like, you know, I always collected things. I like I've been looking at my things. beer, bottle, and can collection. I feel like you... And now that I'm moving, I'm thinking Just about... Perfect. I'm Keep the milkshake, though. I will. I like the milkshake. The milkshake and everything else. But I kept, like... Heady and focal and crusher. Keep like a couple key ones. See now, all of a sudden, <laughs> I went from piff them, piff them, get rid of them. To, no, I keep that. Oh no, keep no, that. Oh, no, no, you, you gotta keep, keep that. No, one. You gotta keep that one. On. They're like the the thing, children, right? Yeah, even I, I threw a bunch out of the grow, uh, growlers recently that I had. Oh, just like cans, I feel like, like it looks like a frat house in my apartment. Like, yeah, it's. Like, <laughs> what do you expect? You know? Yeah, that's what uh, you have for beer. Um, so for those, we actually, funnily enough, uh, I don't, don't know if I said this earlier, but someone mentioned on uh i can't remember if it was instagram or facebook or whatever are you guys have do you guys happen to be doing an episode on cellaring anytime soon this was yeah. like a few days ago and i was like oh, oh yeah scotty's yeah. coming up funnily enough we're gonna do uh something and i was on supposed cellaring. to bring some beers from my cellar but i didn't because i'm a do you know what we wouldn't have had to get through it anyway yeah, i mean we had a few much. drinks that we didn't have too yeah. many at Las bars and um we shot a video before this we had to bust out a really big beer yeah. after this i just couldn't finish this crab one a I'm, small I'm so version sure. of a really big beer though, yeah we have the bigger version of this beer. oh yeah i'm sorry that that one's gonna need four five six people even two of us doing this one i'm genuinely oh, scared but uh so the first uh in our the first point do sell a beer with high amounts of residual malt sugar mm-hmm Basically, they call residual sugars oxygen sponges because they mm. absorb oxygen, which I guess delays the oxidization. Right. Um, and uh, they stop the thinning malt profile, which I guess is kind of like the the main thing. You want to keep that malt exactly how it was supposed Especially to be. Especially if it's one of those like big, robust, malty beers. So right? what, like what would a, be a, a, a beer example with high amounts of residual malt sugar, would you say? I mean, maybe a barley wine? Yeah, um, something like that, imperial or imperial stout. IPA. Yeah, imperial stout. Sorry, not imperial IPA. Imperial stout. I mean, technically, an imperial IPA imperial would have that. Yeah, do but... you know what? I do have a founder's 
Imperial IPA in the fridge, not in there, but I've had it for quite a while. You'd be gross at that. You reckon? Well, I find all the IPAs when they, they get all the all the hops die out and like that boozy maltness comes through. It's uh, mm. I've had like we've sat I've had some headies that sat around for a long time. Yes. The whole color changes; it turns like orange. Yeah, it goes I'm from like a yellow that. to an orange, yeah. and all the hops fall out and it gets malty and boozy. And I'm like, it's yeah, not my jam. I can't definitely deal with that at all. Uh, don't exclude drier styles of beer. So, um, like Belgian Trappist, Trappist styles, yeah, yeah uh, are pretty dry because um, like they do have they don't have the residual sugar, but they also so just because you want to keep the ones that are sort of higher, the ones right. that are on the drier side aren't going to, it's not going to ruin them. Right, definitely good to keep them. Um, lambics and lambics as well of course yeah. lambics are huge for um, aging and yeah. basically one of the things that you said uh, even though a lot of them are fruited I think they maybe it could be in the, the, the chemical makeup of them but they I don't I don't believe they lack the, the um, I'm sorry the fruit drops a lot I've seen so many like lambics are one of the most because it I believe the way the fruit is added is different than like, like the North American correct, stuff correct yeah a lot of the stuff like for instance, the beer we made today, the fruit is just kind of added up, dashed yeah. in at the end. Whereas, like this is like barely aged on that right. for like a year. Or That's whatever. right. So it's yeah. not you're not that that fruit's not falling out. That fruit is a part of the beer. Whereas, it's almost like a lot of the fruited beers we drink are essentially like juices added at the end to just to yes. give it that punch of fruit and flavor and color and stuff. And they're like not like that. embedded into the beer over right. time type of thing. So it's completely different. Right. So do. Add imperial stouts to your cellar. I think mm -mm. like ninety percent of my cellar is imperial stouts. Yeah, I'd say the majority. I have of some uh, some oldies but goodies. I have a Hellwoods from nice way thing. back. I have. Uh, is it an old one? Because I got a newish one. It's it, it, newish. It's like three years old. Okay, I got mine last year. Yeah, no, it. They do them every two year, years right? old, baby. Two years. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two years old. Um, I have some stone. Uh, imperial Russian Imperial Stout in yes. there. I have um, uh, what's that called? Old Rasput Old Rasputin? Rasputin. Yeah, Old Rasputin. Isn't that a, a Rasputin? Yeah. Isn't that who's that by? Is that like a that's American beer, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that like a, a big deal? I think kind of yeah. And I yeah. I found it in LCBO at the same time I found KBS in the uh, LCBO on King Street. Oh, the King's Banana. Yeah. God love it. And I just randomly walked in there and I was like. KBS, what the hell? I was like, is this for sale? Can I get the kids at the time? Like, I never had it. And I was like, sick. This is, you're selling this? And I was like, grabbing the, pulling the whole shelf off of my cart. No. And I found that. And then I found out some other, like, weird Norwegian Belgian double. And I, I bought those and I threw them in. And I put little, um, uh, I bought little, uh, like, uh, uh, sticker tags. And I put, I basically took any information. I, I put the date I bought it on. I put the date, if there's any information, when it was bottled. That's fine. And uh, just any information I, that was on the bottle or that I had at the time, threw it up to the sticker on there and put just it so in there. Know. So now when I pull it out for reference, I'm like, oh, this has been sitting here for two months. Oh, man. I or sorry, have done one that. year, two months, three days, 26 hours, and 46 <laughs> minutes. That's actually genius. So it was an attempt to kind of, uh, you know, start a seller. Mm. A question I have for you is, is there a point in cellaring beers if you can't compare it to the original? Like, you don't know the improvements your beers made yes. if you're not comparing it to another one. I've been told there is zero point. Okay. And I agree with that. Some people are like, like, man, why are you selling? I'm like, I'm not cellaring it to make, to see what it tastes like. Right. It's like I just can't get to it. Right. Like, I don't know. I can't drink seven beers a night, dude. Like, particularly these big ones. A lot of these ones, like, you can't it's not possible to drink unless you're sharing them or unless you're some sort of crazy animal with drinking. There's many so like, if you're not going to compare them yet, there, I've been, when I was first asking a lot of people like Noah Forrest from Beerism told me a lot about this stuff. And like, there is no, uh, there's no other way to know. So it's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go with the uh, next one. Yeah. Don't leave them there for too long. Well, so that's something that we both fuck up. Royally on. Yeah, I mean, so they recommend here that. Uh, well, Emily recommends. Well, Dawson, who she's interviewing, I believe. Oh, Shasta Dawson. Recommends, I think that's his last name. Uh, almost all Imperial Stouts can benefit from a year of aging. Dawson recommends, or Dawson recommends, and beyond that, another two or three years at the most. So I guess that would make four years the longest you could keep 
or should keep a stout. Mm. Three or four years would be the longest. Yeah. So I found I had a KBS from Giles. I reckon it was twenty seventeen as, yeah. and I definitely I don't know if this year just mentioned they can get a soy sauce flavor. I totally really get that soy sauce. like a salty umami flavor. That, yeah, that seems like not, it's like dark. Yeah. Like I had soy sauce the other day, and I was like, oh, this is what they're talking <laughs> about. Like I'm not, I thought about it, I've had yeah. soy sauce a million times, but like comparing it to what people are talking about in yeah. beer, I'm like, oh, I get it. It's just this like saltiness and like kind of tangy bitterness that yeah. like doesn't it's just not really meant to be there yeah. it was subtle but I think you can get a whole beer that's like right. soyed out and you just want to dump that I would like to look because I've always been like beers are a, a very delicate thing they shouldn't be in light they shouldn't be with heat fluctuation they need to be preserved they need to be cold dark and undisturbed, right? Yes. So I would be concerned for the conditions that those are under. I am. And I would, I I would think that it would do more harm than good. I, I don't know. I don't know that I would agree with enough that. about it, but like, I just don't know how, cause I, it's like 80 degrees in here right now. I turn the heat off completely. I, I don't know how cold it's it minus, gets, but like, like, Oh, it gets really cold. If the heat is off, right. it's like you, you have to have a space heater on. Right. You have to like, I just think, cause I went to someone's cellar clearing party once and I'm pretty sure I got sick off their beer because they just kept their this, beer in a the closet. One I'm thinking of? Yeah. They just kept their beer in a closet. Everyone I know does that. Right. But except no, well, no one does, but Noah's in a basement. So I get it. So dark. Yes, I get it dark. But like if it's an upstairs and you're blasting the heat all day, no, like, you're right. I've made this mistake before too. I've I've tried to brew beer and control the heat of, or the brew, the uh, fermentation temperature with like turning my thermostat up and down, and I'm like, not it's, quite, not quite. No, it's like a more precise science. So I w- wanted to t- control the temperature, which is why I put it in the fridge and put the little temperature control. So I feel like I have a little bit more, but like I don't know if the power goes out. Like it's, I, get it. I don't know how temperamental they are. I just don't think everyone's like, different. Heat sure. and light is like the worst thing for a burst for a beer. Yeah. No, you're right. You're so right. And you know what's funny? Uh, when you were mentioning the closet, I remember the guy from the Wild Shack. You met Remy tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a thousand dollar or fifteen hundred dollar bottle of Millennium Goods. They got on the year, made in the year two thousand, yeah, yeah. sitting on a shelf yeah. closet in a bedroom, and they probably had. I don't know if you remember one of our early early videos that actually did yeah. pretty well because it said this is what five thousand dollars of beers looks like and it was like ten beers and it was worth five. Oh, that from uh, uh, from their yeah, wild yeah, yeah, shack. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't their wild shack because yeah, 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 they yeah. had an ex- exceptional seller. That was the right. reason I found out the bell was was fire because they were wearing. Yeah, there wasn't the all like the verticals yeah. lined up. Yeah, insane. And they but they just had, had them sitting around. They the probably house, had like, no. It was in one cl- two closets. They yeah. probably I would say they'd be. Was it cool at least or like? No, particularly we were there in like yeah. January February like. Same as anything else. And I think they probably it, had 10, 20 grand of beer in the... The traditional sense of a cellar would have been an underground room, like the way like they... a rock cave. Yeah, a rock cave yeah. underground like because... the founder's thing. Right, because it's cold all year round. It's cold in the winter. It's cold in the summer. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, you know, kind of cool day. Like, where they age, like, champagne in. It's, like, yeah. dark, cool, musty, like... Musty, for sure. Like, you want, like, dust the, and damp- mold. Damp- every, yeah, the damp- well. exactly. Like, yeah. like, that would be optimal, like... It's pretty hard to recreate that, that but um, I just think light, that, hence why beer bottles are brown, you're keeping light out of it, right? That's as it. much as you can, and um, heat as well, because I've done this before where I, I would have a case of beer, and I'd purchase it from wherever, throw it in the car, and like it would be in the summer, and it would get hot, mm-hmm. and then I'd be like, oh crap, my beer's hot, and then I'd throw it in the fridge again, it would get cold again, and it would lose like... I can already a taste lot. a lot. Like I would be like just that one fluctuation in heat. Like oh, they got really warm, and then I put them back in the fridge again. I don't know what it was, but it was just like they just like were skunked and gross. And I was just like, beer doesn't like that. The same way as like, do you think different styles? I think it would affect different styles differently. Right. Correct. Like one like a hazy IPA would it would affect obviously would be more dead. dramatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be dead, right? And some styles not so much. But again, it's just not good for it. I, I would mm-hmm. want it to be like unsettled so like not shaken up not on its side straight up and down cool and dark would be the optimal thing I just I, I just wonder how much it's affected by not, fluctuations. not having those perfect circumstances and That's... I don't I don't know that answer but um does he anything else uh no uh just happy to be back glad I'm in Montreal drinking beers with my mates hell yeah it's good and, times uh yeah get yeah, exactly. in here like it. Um, all right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up. 
hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell so you know when the new drops. Follow us on social media at BOS Podcast. I thought you might know. Oh, uh, my bad. You ever followed us? Are you following? Should be following I, us? I'm not, I don't follow BOS Podcast. <laughs> are you mad? Wait, are you mad? I've got are time you for mad? That. Mad. Are you mad? Uh, follow us on be it, social media, be it, podcast, and check out the little form audio. It's like a pattern in my head. So I, I know. Come back I know, to it. I know. Um, follow us. Uh, check out the long. Fuck, I'm drunk. Check out the long form hey. audio. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, we've got lots of fire coming, particularly this one. Uh, that's it, mate. Just fucking get it. Fourteen percent. I know. Stop it. Yeah. it.